हेलो नमस्ते एवरीवन माय नेम इज़ शरण तापिया एंड यू आर वाचिंग यू मल्टीकल्चरल चैनल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एशियन वीमेन ऑफ विनीपेग टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट विद अस तारा मनियार तारा मनियार इज ए लाइफ कोच एंड पीपल माइट हैव अ क्वेश्चन व्हाई वी नीड लाइफ कोच वी नो हाउ टू लिव आवर लाइफ I think it's very important if you listen to her and learn that why it's absolutely important to have a life coach. Just like you need a mama to feed you, you need teachers to teach you to get good education. Life coaches teach you what control you have on your destiny, how you do your karma, what makes you so special and stand out and how you navigate through the ups and down of life so let me introduce you tara manya tara ji welcome to the show tell us something about yourself first oh wow hmm my goal is to be one with the divine and everything i do leads me to that that discovery of the divine within in recognizing that i am connected to the divine on a regular basis so when we talk about who am i I can say I'm a spiritual life coach because it's what I do. I can say that I am a chakra dance facilitator because it's what I do. Okay. I can say I'm a writer or a speaker. That's what I'm doing right now. Um so when you say tell me a little bit about yourself, how much time do you have? <laughs> 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 I'm sure audience wanted to know. Um so you talk about you are your goal is to be one with the divine. Yes. So every human can be one with the divine or are we already not one with the divine? Well, the divine is within us. Right. But we are not aware of the divine within us. Ah. that's a different you don't really awaken the divine within you you the divine is already awake within you but you're not aware that the divine is within you so you have to focus set the goal to recognize that you are divine and then do the work to realize that you are divine every single human being every plant every the stone that you see on the road right all has divinity within it the plants that you plant in your garden or you go to um the leaf and see the plants there right it's all divine the breeze that caresses your cheek the sun the moon the earth that you walk on is all divine because it has the word the shakti the feminine energy within all of it so it's us that has to recognize that we are divine but it's not just going to happen by saying i am divine that's just a word that's a concept okay but we need to do the work the practices to go from concept to knowledge right to knowing and experiencing so just like we do um, go to school college um, and go from one grade to the other exactly is this is the similar thing you are saying it's very similar so you start off by other people telling you 
I'm going to continue with I am divine. Okay. So other people telling you that you are divine. Right. Right? But how do you know that you're divine? You're getting angry. Yes. You're your mind is jumping from one to the other to the other, right? Right. You cannot settle down. Um, I'm talking with you. Right. And you're trying to listen to me. Yes. But your mind is thinking about what you have to do this afternoon. Might be. Right. If I'm not focused on the moment. Exactly. So when you focus on the moment, yes. for instance, if someone says, who's the most important person to you? And I say, in this moment, Sharon, you're the most important person for me. Because in this moment. Yes. If I move and I'm starting to talk to another person. Right. That person becomes the most important person to me. So I am living in the moment. So how do you get there? It's first by setting the intention. So is that the first like kindergarten of this school? Yeah. Spiritual school? Yeah. You basically set the intention. Okay. As to what you want, you know, and then you connect, you connect with yourself. And the easiest way of connecting with yourself is just paying attention to your breath. Just taking two or three deep breaths. So when I teach people um, about meditation, Right. You've got to do meditation. We're hearing about meditation so yes. much. And we all know in our minds that meditation is important because you've been told that meditation helps you to settle down, calm down, and really focus. And you know you need to focus because your mind is jumping all over the place. Right. And you've been told if, if, when you're working, you have to be multitasking. Yes. Right? Yes. How do you multitask? A computer doesn't multitask. How do you, the individual who <coughs> created the computer, right. um, will have to be multitasking? You can't. You have to be focused on one thing at a time. In this second, that's what I'm focusing on. So in my breath, I focus. One in breath, out breath, inhale, Exhale, and that's all you think about when you're doing that. So take three deep breaths, and that helps you to slow down. So I'm going to ask you to do that. Okay, you know what's going on in your mind right now, right? Right. So now I'd like you to take three deep breaths. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. If you want, you can close your eyes or just focus on me. I, I have one question. Yeah. Again. Yeah. It's just um, f uh, focusing on the moment. Yes. So from the moment we born. Yes. You know, we, we learn about how to eat. Uh -huh. That's the first thing. Yeah. As a human being comes natural. Yeah. So focusing on ourselves or connecting with the divine, that's not a permanent part of our bringing up. Why our ancestors or, or let's say our mothers mm -hmm. um, not, were not focused on these things. Um, they were focused on how to dress us up and how to make us learn to walk, talk, right. everything. Mm -hmm. So why this training was not a part of our bringing up from very early age? Well, in lots of homes, in Indian homes, they do. Oh. When they ask you to do your puja, your yes. spiritual ritual in the morning, right, and to um, maybe do a mantra or focus on Om, that's the beginning of the focusing. That's the kindergarten part of focusing, right? When you, as a baby, first start eating food, you're spilling it all over yes. yourself, right? Yes. But as you practice, practice, you'd start when you're eating, you're eating and the food is falling out or you're eating with your mouth open right. or your food is falling out of the plate. But as you practice and practice, you're able to 
eat without it spilling on your body or spilling off the plate, and you're getting more refined at it. So it's kind of the same thing. You know what, that's a really good um, explanation you gave me, and that triggered my memory when we were little, we always seen our grandmas in the in the worship room. Yes. You know, moms are always busy cooking. Right. Getting the breakfast ready. Yes. And grandma, they were sitting in the prayer room yeah. doing all the prayers. And That's I know right. as a kid, we used to go after getting ready for school, we used to go there yes. and do prayer with them, yes. then eat and then leave. That's it. Yeah. So maybe that part they was missing you. in this country. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've forgotten about all those things yeah. because we are not living in in joint family settings. We don't know how our elders are doing. Yeah. So that was a big, big part missing in the lives of kids here. That's true. That's true. Because you know, in the same way, you know, when I was growing up in Trinidad, yes. being of East Indian background, yes. being of Hindu background, right? I would, when we was in a joint family, definitely, you know, um, we didn't have a puja room as such or a puja place. Right. But for us, it was part of everyday life. When you think about it, it is the grandparents that sets the example by, by what they do. The parents are really busy making a living. Yes. Like your mom, you know, your mom is doing the making, cleaning the house and cooking and washing the clothes and all of those things. Dad is out uh, making, you know, um, dads making were a not, living. The dads were not playing a big <laughs> part of in bringing up children, I guess. That's it right. was more grandparents. Yeah. And moms were always busy. Exactly. Uh, so exactly. this is really so interesting. Uh, yeah. So it was a really, by example, yes. the grandparents are doing this. Teaching now, their traditions. Right. And they didn't uh, sit you down and set you and say, this is what you do and this is how you do it. They did it and you learned by observing. Yes. How did we learn to walk? By observing. Yes. Everything we've learned before the age of six is basically by observing. We hear this, um, don't, um, don't, don't, don't do what I do, do what I say, but we end up doing what we've but seen, yes. right? Yes. So it, the grandparents in an extended family yes. did that. Now, here in Canada, we may not have grandparents, yes. but we have parents. Yes. It now becomes the responsibility of the parents That's to <laughs> set the example. And if I use myself as an example, when uh, we were coming to Canada right. uh, way back when, my mom, it was the first time she was traveling out alone because dad was already here. Okay. And it's like, what can you bring? This was in the 60s. Right. What do you bring? She brought the Ramayana. She brought the Gita. Aww. She brought little pictures of, um, of the, gods the, and of the divine. Right. She brought um, a Hanuman Chalisa. And those were the things that she brought because she said she's going into this crazy world, that p country that she didn't know where she was going, what she will, you know, what she will see, what is available, right. what's not available. So those are the things that she brought. And then when we came to Manitoba, we were in, first home was in Portage La Prairie. Oh. There's no mandir there. There is no temples there. There were we were one of three families okay. that were immigrants. Okay. 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 Immigrants of color. Right. Right. Where do you go to continue your practice? Yes. We did it at home. At home. No parents. No grandparents. Right. So our parents, every Sunday night, uh, mom would cook dinner. Right. We'd go downstairs where we created a little puja room. Right. Do our puja. Come upstairs and eat dinner in front of the TV. All right. That became our culture. Culture. for a little while and you know what's really interesting as I'm telling you this when the British brought the Hindus to Trinidad way back when in the 1850s or wherever guess what they brought with them what they said that they brought uh, 
the Ramayana uh, under their arms, <laughs> the um, Gita in their grip, that's in your suitcase, wow. and the Hanuman Chalisa in their hearts. And I learned that from Bhujya Shankaracharyaji, who is a spiritual being, a spiritual teacher, a right. guru right. from India. Oh, wow. Yes. And he loves Trinidad because that's how we kept our religion. Our culture. That's how we kept our culture. We had to change it a little bit. Right. That's when we say culture is living. Yeah, culture is always changing. It's always Adopting changing. Adopting new things. Exactly. Leaving the old traditions which no longer beneficial In to, this culture. to today's culture. Exactly, yes. exactly. So tell me. So that's how I kept my culture. And how did I get to that place of being one, being aware that I am one with the divine is not only first setting the goal, but doing what needs to be done. Every Sunday night, my parents, that's what we did. Right. Because we were busy going to school, trying to make a living, trying to settle down here in yes. Canada, yes. right? Trying to get to the, the, the understand what this culture is all about and how do I bring both in. And then when I got old enough, or, you know, we're busy going to school. Right. Didn't do anything for the longest time. I didn't do any religious practice. And then, because we set the intention, yes. I'm reminded I have to do these things. So I get up and I do three deep breaths. That's it. And out the door. <laughs> so what is, tell me about what is karma? Karma, I consider is like action. Our actions yes. is a karma. Yes. So why our karma is important? Okay. And what is all about? Now these days people talk about karma and I consider karma as your action, what you put in the universe. Uh, that's our deposit, like a bank deposit. Uh -huh. Just like a bank <laughs> deposit in the, um, in, in the universe. Yeah. So you get what you put in. Yes. So tell me more about that. How oh. can we do a good karma and reap the benefit of good karma or is there such thing? or just nature gonna take its place anyway? Well, I love the way you put it <coughs> as bank deposit, right? Karma, you say, is action. Yes. And that's true. Okay. Oh. Karma is action. It is whatever you do out there is karma. Whatever, everything. Like everything, good, bad, ugly, everything, it's karma. See, we think of karma just as karma, actually is the law of the universe. So I'm gonna stop you right there yeah. because I just, so karma is the action. Yes. So what about our intention? So are we getting the benefit of our intention or the karma is something like physically we are doing something, you know? Well, karma is action. Karma is action. It's action. And the law of karma, which is universal, okay. uh, impacts everyone right is basically um whatever you do you receive multiplied oh yes multiplied whatever you do you receive multiplied <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh, it's not only action because when you think about it before you act you have to think Speak about it. Speak about it? That's right. Oh. Whether you're speaking about it, just think about this building. Right. Before this building, because there's construction happening right now, and that's the reason I thought of it. Right. Before this building became a building, right. someone had the idea, they thought about it. It was on the paper. Yeah, they think, thought about they it. They about it. Right? Yes. They dre dreamt about it. They yes. set the goal. This is what they want. All of that. Yes. So again, we come back to intention. Right. Everything is intention. Right. Then once we do the intention and we talk about it. Yes. Then we get the action. And then it becomes physical. And then it becomes reality. Yes. So I'll yes. go back to knowing. We may know that we are divine. But how do I go from the knowledge that I am divine to the knowing 
that I am divine, to experiencing yes. that I am divine, right. right? Is by setting that intention and then connecting with how do I do this? You put that question out there into the universe. Who are you talking to when you put it out into the universe? We are talking to the God Almighty, the Creator. You think so? Who else? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we always that's think. That's what we think, yes. right? That's, that's what, what we, we think, think because that's the way we are raised. That's to right. Think to think that, that when you are you talking put to it out there. Yes. You're talking to the universe. Yes. So that's the universal consciousness. Is who you're really talking to. You're putting out, out there that that is what you want. But you've got to pay attention to your intention in every single moment. How is that going to fit into what I want? And then you're given the direction. What did, what, who's giving you the direction? Who do you think? It's not my mind. <laughs> I'd like to think it's my mind because if we say it's not our mind, people yeah. are going to think we are crazy. Well, it's not somebody else telling you. It's the spiritual uh, area where people think, you know, like sometimes hap what happens is like we, we prepare for something, right. right? We go there and we, we are ready to say what we rehearsal. Yeah. And then we go there and we say something else and then we say, you know what? I wasn't thinking to say that, exactly. but it just came out of my mouth. Exactly. So that's when, you know, sometimes I think, I don't know where my mind was, you know, uh -huh. because we think our mind is this. So, but our mind is, is not running the show. That's right. So this is another whole different that's level. That's a whole <laughs> other thing, right? But uh, with the karma, right? We know that whatever we do comes back to us multiplied. And in this life, there are certain things that you have to accomplish. Yes. And uh, with the... And we are thinking we are accomplishing it. Exactly. That's another That's a layer. whole other layer. Yes. So karma, if you think of karma as in every part of your life, now, you can use that concept of karma as every part of your life yes. to co-create yes. your life. You're not the only one that's involved in co-creating your life. But if you want a good life, you want to be able to do good actions. So that good actions will come back to you multiplied. So how about the bad actions? Again, it doesn't, the bad action does not. Um, or uh, the universe doesn't differentiate good or bad. They don't differentiate good or bad. It's human beings that differentiate good or bad. Karma is the law of science that says okay. whatever you do, whatever is done out there. Every action has every a reaction. Action has a reaction. We know that's science, right? Right. That is karma. That is karma. And that's just the first layer of karma. There's right. so many different layers of karma. Yes. That every, but the basic, and right now it's the introduction of how do I use the concept of karma, the concept of being one with the divine to co-create your life? I continue to set that intention of recognizing that I am divine and you will be led to doing the actions to yes. bring you to that realization that I am divine. How long does that take? A lifetime. Yes. And you will realize. Or maybe lifetime is a short time too. For well, some. we're only talking about this lifetime. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Because I mean, sometimes some people are from the very young age, they, they had that realization, depending on their uh, uh, company from childhood. If they are um, raised in that kind of atmosphere, 
okay. where they are grounded in that sense. It's just all the grounding, you know, like exactly. as a human being, we think we control this, we can do this, we can do that. And then nature interferes in things. And sometimes circumstances hit you with the different things where you think you have no control over the situation wow. or the nature or anything you thought you had a control. I love the fact that you said you have no control over the situation. No one has control over the situation, but what they do have is control of how they respond to or react to the yes. situation. Yes, right? until you hit with that moment, people think they are running the whole world. Exactly. Right? Right. Until they hit <coughs> with that <coughs> moment when they realize that they don't have any control whatsoever. But yes, only control we have is on our action. Yes. But if on we are no. already divine, on part of divine, then mm. how we separate ourselves from our actions and... You, you know, don't. You so don't separate Our yourself. actions are us, we are one. Exactly. When you, when you understand that I am divine, if you could just work on that, how do you go from the knowledge, the concept, the knowledge, first you have the concept, then you do the knowledge, and then you have the knowing. We want to work, we realize that we have to put the action in. You have to, how do I become, how do I be aware that I am divine? Right. Is you do the action. There's where your karma comes in. So when a challenge comes in front of you. Yes. And you feel as though you have no control. Yes. You realize that, uh, yes, I have control on how I respond yes. to that challenge. And if I believe that challenge is given to me so that I can learn something. Right. Right? Yes. You walk through the challenge instead of run from it. So many times a challenge comes and you get so angry, I, I have no control over that. I want control over it. You know, you want to um, run away from it. Instead Either of you saying, run away or you... Well, yeah, I don't want to deal with it, right? Yes. I don't want to deal with it. I get angry about it. This is not what I wanted, yes. right? Yes. And, you know, and you blame another person for why you're in this situation. We never blame ourselves. You never say, hmm, what am I supposed to learn out of this? So many times the same thing keeps coming up. Yes. And you say, why is this coming back to me? Right. Why am I getting the same thing all the time? Right. Well, you're getting it because you haven't learned your lesson. And our purpose as a human being, that's our goal as a human being, is to recognize that the divine is within me. Because we have this consciousness yes. that's been downloaded into us that can discriminate, make um, decisions yes. of what our actions should be. Right. Because we know karma is. Yes. Whatever we put out there, we're going to receive. Right multiplied yes tenfold they say right. if you want it a hundredfold and we're only thinking the positive right right it's a hundredfold however when we put it out there negative things negative comes to us and the god god is divine in whatever name or form is so compassionate yes that they give you give you opportunities to discover the divine in not only yourself but in everything so you see a sunrise the sunrise is divine you see full moon yes that too is divine you see the challenge yes if you see the challenges that too is divine right and you walk through it say okay what are you trying to teach me and I haven't learned yet? 
And you'd be surprised that when you ask that question, <gasps> that's the solution. Ah, now, now I know why you slapped me up a year ago. Because I hadn't learned a lesson. They are so, and I, I say they, they because they come in different forms depending on what I need in the moment. Right. Right? Okay. Um, so they are so compassionate. They are like your teacher, your mother, your father, your friend, your brother, your sister, your lover. Yes. All of it. How do I need them today? And as I constantly remember, I am divine, but I haven't quite de experienced the divinity. I keep striving for it. You know, it's like, I want to get a degree. Yes. I decide as to whether I'm going to do that degree in three years, four years, five years. What are the basic few steps people can take in order to keep their spiritual health aligned with, with their life and keep that balance because everything is, is good as long as it's in balance. Of course. So let's teach our audience few basic things they should do on daily basis. Okay. In on order to keep balance, just like we yeah. eat daily, yeah. right? We, we get ready daily, we exactly. work. So mm -hmm. if we make this as a routine, a in routine. our da daily yep. routine, it can help us yep. to, to serve our purpose in this world. So I, I can share with you a yes. couple of things that yes. you can do. Mm. We all talk about meditation. Yes. And as soon as we talk about meditation, we say, oh, I don't have time to meditate, right? right. So three deep breaths every, deep every morning. You have time to do that. Just three deep breaths? Just three deep breaths. And you can do it when you're driving. You can do it when you're walking, if you're, right. if you're exercising in the yes. morning. Work it into your life. Okay. I'm, that's what I'm going to teach you. Work it into your life. You're exercising. You're going to work and you've got to use the bus. You're going to use the, you're going to, you're driving. Right. Guess what? So three, take the, take three deep breaths? Three deep breaths. Take the radio off and just take a deep breath. Okay. And then set an intention of what energy you're going to carry with you for the rest of the day, just for today. Yes. What energy? I'm going to carry the energy of, oh, you know what? I feel like love today. Right. So I'm going to carry the energy of love. Okay. Then no matter what happens, what is presented to me in the world, I am going to respond with love. Okay. Right? So those are two things. Those are the two things. Okay. And now, your boss, your wife, your child, whoever comes at you is really angry. Most human beings, <laughs> most individuals will respond with anger. Yes, if they <gasps> But I said love. Ah, you need to remind yourself. You got to remind yourself. That, that intentions are very important. If exactly. you set in the advance, you, no. no matter what happens. Yeah, attention is... The attention is important right? because we set the intention and we forget about it. And right. the anger comes. Yes. So you got to remind yourself of the intention. Right. So whenever you're dealing with whatever in the world, with this love. is how I'm going to respond with love. Okay. Right? Yes. And uh, at the end of the day, right. you sit and you reflect on your day so reflecting on your daily routine is very important yes so the intention in the morning yes the the breath yes. is your connection yes you're connecting with yourself right you're connecting with the divine within you only you don't know it yet right right right, right. you're connecting with yourself yes intention connection Yes. Or connection and intention, however you want to do right, it. Right. The intention is important. Connection is important. Pay attention to your intention. Yes. And at the end of the day, yes. reflect and appreciate all that manifested during the day. 
I say the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. All of the good, you want to give attention, you're going to give credit to yourself. <laughs> because I'm the one that did it. That's I'm okay. the one who's working hard exactly. to keep my <laughs> <laughs> level of uh, exactly. reaction so in a loving that's manner. Okay. That's okay. We need to honor and validate the ego. Because if we don't honor and validate the ego, mm. the ego is always going to come at us. Because we've been living with the ego in charge of our life. Okay. All we of our lives. Do, we need to do another uh, session on the ego. <laughs> Well, yeah, we could, actu we could actually do another session on doing this. Yes. So I'm going to ask the audience yes. to pay, connect with yourself with the breath. Right. Set an intention. Yes. Live, pay attention to your intention. Right. And then reflect. And any of the good things, say thank you for all the good things that yes. happened. Appreciate it. Be grateful for it. Okay? Right. right. And there's going to be those that, yeah, I didn't do it. I didn't respond with love. Appreciate that also. But ask the question, what was, what was it in that situation that caused me to react with anger or whatever it is, didn't speak my truth? Right. What was it? Mm. Not why didn't I, but what was it in that situation? And now you become a witness to the situation instead of defending. See the difference? Yes. When I say, why did I behave that way? I'm looking to so defend that's self, myself. Self-criticism is that when we are ask ourselves, why I did this? That's why? Right. It's just like questioning our... But when you question, you want to defend yourself that's the human being that's yes. the ego yes. want to defend it right because she said this because i because she did that it's always somebody else's fault but when i say what was it about that situation i become the witness to the situation i'm not in the situation and i don't answer it then i let it go and i go back and i connect with the with myself Right. The answer to that question, what was it about that situation, is going to come to you at the right time. That's the reason you need to release it. Because then I'll be constantly thinking about that question, right. about that situation. So I release it and trust and have faith that the answer will come to you at the right time. Sometimes it's a commercial on TV. Yes. Sometimes it's you, met a, you meet a friend and having a conversation and that friend says something, that, ah, that was it. Yes. You're now always aware because you had set that intention. Yes. Yesterday or whenever. But you had also set an intention way back when. In the morning. Even before that. Right. <laughs> I am divine, I know I am yes. divine because I have been told through the scriptures or through your uh, uh, spiritual um, teacher, yes. your spiritual master, the preacher at church, the yes. imam at the mosque, you know, or, you know, um, from a leader, an elder, right. you've been told that you're divine. So that has been planted in your psyche yes. way back when, even though you're not consciously aware of it. Right. But we have been working all our lives right. to discover that we are divine. But we have not been putting the action, the karma, yes. towards that. Uh, I am divine. Yes. What we've been putting our attention to right. is this, that, and everything else. So connecting with yourself in the morning connecting with the divine within you in the morning is a reminder that that's what I'm supposed to be working on on a regular basis. And we move it from the unconscious to the conscious so I can do the action, the right action, to come back to knowing that I am divine. Knowledge, concept, knowledge, knowing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Taraji. 
This was a really enlightening experience for me and I'm sure for the listeners as well. I know life is very busy, especially in these countries where we have to do everything ourselves, take care of our families, kids, ourselves, and then work away from home. We all need time to have a me time to keep balance in our lives. And as Taraji said, and I'm sure there is so much more she can talk about and we can benefit from that. But we need to take time to smell the roses. We need to take time to reflect on our own responsibilities towards ourselves and towards this universe, the community, mm -hmm. the people, the family, everybody. As much as we dedicate our life for others, we need to have a dedicated time for ourselves to keep our physical, spiritual, mental health in balance and not to forget why we are here in this world and what is our role. And if you need more information on this and if you need more direction, we will have Taraji's information. Um, we'll share it on the screen with you so you can connect with her. It's very important just like you have a diet plan, you have exercise plan, um, you have work schedule. It's very important to schedule a me time, a spiritual time, a coach or a guru who can teach you. And we will be coming back again with Taraji because I uh, heard that uh, uh, when she's teaching, and she's been teaching for such a long time, <laughs> now people are calling her Tara Ma. So when this word Ma means mother, so when this word comes and people start calling you that name, it means a lot. Ma or mother is a second after God, if you believe in the power of God. Because mother is your first teacher in this world. Mm -hmm. and. Personally, Taraji, just wanted to share one thing before we say goodbye. Mm -hmm. I have many mothers. One is a biological mother mm -hmm. who gave you birth, and then mothers like Taraji. And then you have, I have so many mothers who shaped me to the person who I am today. Mm -hmm. And they come in many forms. And it's very important for you to have those special mother figures in your life who can teach you to be a better person. So with all this, we'll say goodbye and watch for the next seminar, uh, uh, next interview with, with Taraji. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And thank you for watching this episode. Have a good day. Bye. Namaste. <laughs>